from the Everest Base Camp ER. We are um, lucky today to be able to interview Dr. Brent Sistermans. Thanks, Brent. Anytime, guys. Uh, tell us about the CUNY thing. Okay, so um, Everest DR was set up as a part of the Himalayan Rescue Association in 2003 by Dr. Luan Freer. Uh, the Himalayan Rescue Association was initially established back in 1973 with a clinic down at Ferrochet, and then again another clinic was set up in the 1980s at Menang, which is on the Annapurna Circuit. The reason the clinic was set up, and the reason the HRA was set up, was because there was a number of deaths at altitude, uh, especially in trekkers. Um, <clears throat> And these were very unfortunate, very tragic, but also very preventable. Uh, so the Himalayan Rescue Association has a mandate to look after the population of the local, the local and surrounding uh, communities, uh, as well as the porters, uh, the guides, and then following on from that, uh, the, the trekkers. Now up here at Everest DR, we're slightly different in what we do. Uh, we're here to look after the Sherpa and the kitchen staff uh, that are that are here, that are up here uh, to provide support to the mountaineers that are trying to summit Everest. Um, so, we're reasonably busy, we see about anywhere between 10 and 20 patients a day, uh, about 50% of those in Nepal and about 50% are, are, are mountaineers. What kind of patient do you see here? Yeah, so predominantly what we actually see here, and surprisingly so, and this uh, surprises a lot of the trekkers and people that come to visit us, is that we tend to see a lot of just family physician type medicine. Uh, so vast majority of our cases are upper respiratory tract infections, kumbu cough, bit of tonsillitis, pharyngitis, sinusitis, excuse me. And in addition to that, traveler's diarrhea or gastroenteritis also tends to be very common as well. We're still relatively early in the season. Most of the teams have just come back from their first um, acclimatization rotation or they might be heading off on their second at the moment. So uh, we're yet to see a lot of those uh, cold injuries or uh, AMS type things uh, that will come through later in the season. What um, would be something that you would suggest that people do to try to stay healthy here? Yeah, so it's 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 various. There's uh, amongst the mountaineers, uh, there's a, a great range of experience in people, and for a lot of people to stay healthy, having previous experience in the mountains before coming to Mount Everest might be a pretty good suggestion. For those of us that do have experience at altitude, uh, wearing a buff tends to help. No, I don't have mine off now. I've taken it off for the interview, actually. Uh, but wearing a buff helps to insulate and humidify the air that brings it in, and it helps to prevent the auto-dreaded kumbu cough. Mm. That's probably one of the best things that we can do to stay healthy at altitude, in addition to your usual things of hand hygiene and making sure you're drinking safe water. What would you recommend for the trekker? Like for the trekkers, so I would recommend for trekkers that they come with a, with a good company. Um, that is well respected uh, and that has fantastic guides. Because for people that aren't used to trekking in Nepal, uh, the success of their trek and the happiness and their safety of their trek really comes down to the quality of their guides. So if they can make sure that they're uh, with a good company, that they're actually not cutting corners by taking a cheap package, uh, making sure that they have appropriate days for acclimatization um, on their trekking, appropriate rest days at Nampche and somewhere like Ferrache where our HRA <laughs> clinic is or Dingbache is another spot to have a couple of nights rest, is will help to prevent um, uh, developing any illness on, on route and will help to make sure that people have a, a happy and safe trek. Well done your bud, Brent. Thank you so much. Anytime, guys. Thank you.